It's now been over six years since I first moved to Sweden and started this YouTube channel. Actually back in January of 2018, I gave my initial reactions to moving in Sweden in the video, five things that shocked me about moving to Sweden. Now having spent all this time here, having become a Swedish citizen, speaking the Swedish language fluently and really being able to call Sweden my home, I wanna reflect back and think about the experience as a whole. What are five things that I find shocking about this country? There's gonna be some similarities to that first video I did all those years ago, but there's gonna be some unique hot takes in this video that I hope you guys find interesting. One of the first things that shocked me when I moved to Sweden was the climate and especially the length of the days and how you have extreme differences between the long summer nights where the sun seems to never go down and the winter where the sun goes down extremely early. And there's so much variation throughout the days here in Sweden that it still surprises me year after year that I live here. So what do what you think about this weather in Sweden? Oh, it's good. It's much better. The longest day of the year, June 21st in Stockholm, the sun might set around 11 o'clock at night and then you'll even have some residual light until the sun might come up at 2.30 or 3 in the morning. So it's truly unlike anything else if you have not been this far north on the globe. In the winter, it is the exact opposite. Here at the shortest time of the year, so for example, December 21st, which is the shortest day, the sun might come up around 9, 9.30, and then it will set around maybe 2.30. So you go from on the long end having a day that's like 20 hours long in the summer to maybe just five hours in the winter time. And the days around the longest and shortest days of the year, you don't see so much change from day to day, but when you're in the middle points, so say September or March, you start to see big changes from day to day, where each day becomes maybe 10 minutes longer. So you notice the changes a lot more quickly in Sweden compared to where I'm from in Portland, Oregon, which is quite far north compared to the US. But if you compare just how far north Sweden is, it's at a whole nother level. I've also now been to the north of Sweden several times. And once you get past the Arctic Circle, you truly get to a point where on the longest day of the year, the sun never sets. The second thing that shocked me about moving to Sweden is something that I'm gonna call the logom lifestyle. Now, for those of you not super familiar with Swedish culture, there's a word in Swedish called logom, which basically translates to not too much, not too little, just right. But to me, this is more than just a word. It's almost a way of life because in Sweden, people don't like to necessarily stand out. And in general, I think people live a very moderate lifestyle. People are more happy with what they have. Whereas growing up in America, I felt like people were always pushing for more. It's a very competitive society. It just seems like people here have more of a sense of inner peace and there's less of this hustle culture that you'd be sure to experience if you spent any real time in the US. The only way that Swedish people are not logom, I would say is the amount of coffee that they drink because I've never met other people anywhere in the world that drinks more coffee than the Swedish people do. The third thing that shocked me about moving to Sweden and now having lived here for so long is the sense of collectivism that Swedish people have. I oftentimes feel like the US can be a very individualistic society. I mean, if you were to walk around my high school where I attended in the US, you'd see tons of individual accolades hung up all around the school, in the gymnasium, in the hallways. Think about like science student of the month, math student of the month, all state soccer player, all state American football player. Americans have a truly competitive culture and a culture that places a high sense of significance on people standing out and praising individual accolades. At times it can almost feel like there's this every man for themselves mentality in the US when you think about gun owners owning guns to protect their property from other people or just millions of Americans not having access to publicly funded healthcare or the fact that college costs so much money that it affords some people the opportunity to pay for college and get a higher education where it can be much more difficult for others. A lot of those things just don't exist in Sweden and I think it runs to a much deeper level 
culturally because Swedish people have this sense of collectivism. One of the first things that shocked me when I moved to Sweden was just how high the taxes were. And as someone that's grown up in America, I've never been a huge fan of paying high taxes, but I've heard many of my Swedish friends, colleagues, and people that have gotten to know in this country say that they're happy to pay the high taxes. And this is very interesting because this is something that I've never heard an American say that they're happy to pay high taxes. The thing is that Swedish people really like to contribute to the common good. So we see this from paying taxes, but also in the way that they care about the environment, that they recycle. There's also a very high sense of trust in society, almost to the point where it can seem a little bit naive that people trust each other so much here as an outsider that has come and seen it with different eyes. But to be honest, this sense of social trust and cohesion is one of my favorite things about this country and one of the reasons why I've always felt so comfortable here. People just aren't trying to one-up each other or take advantage of each other. They're always very thoughtful about the common good. Another benefit of this is through the work culture. And I see oftentimes in important decision-making processes and things that work in a Swedish company, everyone gets to weigh in, everyone gets to have a say, whether it's your first day in the job or you're the founder and CEO of the company that's been working on the project for over 10 years. Everyone's opinion is valued and there's much less of a hierarchical structure, which is pretty common in the vast majority of other countries. In contrast to the sense of collectivism in Sweden, the fourth thing that really shocked me about having lived here for so long is the sense of individualism in Swedish society. And one statistic that really makes this stand out for me is that Swedish people move out of their parents' homes on average at 17.8 years of age, which is one of the lowest ages in the world for citizens globally to move out of their childhood home. Contrast that with many cultures in Southern Europe where people will not move out of their parents' home until their late 20s. The sense of individualism in Sweden basically means that people want to be independent. They don't wanna be a burden on anyone else. And I would say that people in this country are very self-sufficient. They're well-educated, really great independent thinkers. And so you see this interesting contrast of people wanting the good of the collective, but being very self-sufficient. And this sense of independence can manifest itself in all kinds of ways throughout Swedish society. Notably, if you're out dating or if you are going out with friends, that everyone wants to pay an equal amount so that it doesn't feel like one person is being a burden in the group. Everyone wants this sense of collectivism and that they're pitching in. And we also see these themes throughout all aspects of Swedish society when it comes to things like equality, feminism, income levels for different jobs, and people's overall approach to life. And the fifth and final thing that shocked me about moving to Sweden was just how amazingly well Swedish people speak English. And this came as a greater shock to me than maybe to others because when I was a kid, a young boy at five years old, my entire family lived in Berlin and actually in East Berlin. Granted, this was after the Berlin Wall fell, of course, but all of my teachers and stuff at the kindergarten that I was going to did not speak any English because everyone in East Berlin, they learned Russian in school when they were kids. So before I started moving to Sweden, I started studying the Swedish language extensively. I remember sitting hours in front of Duolingo every single day to start to build up my basic vocabulary. But then when I finally got to Sweden, I was absolutely shocked how well Swedish people speak English. I might even go as far as to say that even if you're living in Sweden as a foreigner, it's not necessary to speak Swedish. But with that being said, if you do learn to speak Swedish, it opens up an entire new realm of Swedish culture and being fully integrated in Swedish society. And it's something that I'm very glad that I've done personally. The problem is because Swedish people are so good at speaking English, a lot of times for the people that are trying to learn Swedish, want to try to practice speaking Swedish with actual Swedish people, they'll quickly switch to English because people have this tendency to communicate in the language that is easiest for both parties. To try to solve this problem, a few friends and I have created a new way to learn Swedish, and it's called the Language Gym. What the Language Gym is, is basically it's a dedicated space for anyone that's trying to learn the language to constantly practice and push their language skills to the next level with a community of language learners just like them. 
and superstar teachers like Katrine from Slow Swedish and Frederick from the Simple Swedish podcast. I'm actually hosting a few classes myself as well if you'd like to practice speaking Swedish with me in there. With one monthly membership, you get access to multiple group live Swedish classes every single day that you can sign in and attend directly from your smartphone. That's over 60 hours of Swedish group conversation practice classes every single month that can help you level up your Swedish in no time. And if you want to try it out, I'm going to leave a link down below in the description that you can get 50% off your first month. The goal of this program is that basically any day of the week, you can just sign up for a class and start practicing your Swedish with real people basically whenever you want. So with that guys, thanks for watching this video. As always, leave your questions and comments down below and I look forward to seeing you all in another video.